Okay, so we are on the recording. So once again, today we'll be discussing pretty, pretty much the science of experiments in art and information technology, but possibly sort of sliding to other decades. Um, and yeah, so the, the plan I think is to start with questions and then maybe briefly discuss uh, what is going on on um, on, on the slides that I've shared, like with Tony Martin and um, at Electronic Cafe International. Um, so starting with uh, questions and I guess uh, from the yeah. roots, um, when, when you met the two other collaborators uh, on CIT, David and, and Mark in each case, when was the last, the, the first uh, exposure? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I don't know the date, but you probably have that somewhere. Um, I could find it if you need it, but um, I don't have the date, but um, it was, um, the, the, actually the, the very beginning didn't have David in it. The very beginning was Mark and myself and, um, I don't I I'll have to I would have to look up the date I don't I don't remember that but um it was early on gosh so long ago um and at that point I was I I, I had a feeling that uh, Cal Arts could become um technologically interesting if, if we had a reach research center, we could bring people in. And the um, to, to start it off, we needed to get um, funding. And uh, um, I was just starting to make um, programs for children. Uh, and um, so I thought it might be good to get to to uh, just start that, that would be the first project. And Mark was gonna do the programming and we brought Peter Norton, you know who that is? I think I've heard of him, but- uh, Yeah, it's the Norton Utilities. Um, yes, I've heard from David. Yeah, and he and Peter um, Norton was, it, it I was told that Peter Norton was very interested in what I was doing. So I had a meeting with him and he was he he put quite a bit of money in um made by bystanders anyway, um from his foundation to um to get it started. And he came and actually participated in it um in what we did. And so we started with various things related to the children's program. We tested ideas and things and Mark did all, Mark Coniglio did all the programming. He had been um, a student of mine and um, um, <laughs> it's, it's complicated, but in any, in any case, he did programmings for me uh, um, along the way. And uh, so he, he joined into it and Peter was very excited about it. He liked it. He liked it a lot. And that got the the thing going. <clears throat> the program was um we we went to different schools and tried things out. It was basically pitch uh I have a, a, a an app on Apple. It's called um pitch pitch painter. Wow. And it's 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 based it's it it actually is based on that first thing that we did way back at that point. It's it's up and you could look at it at some point. It's it's very cheap and it's it it allows children to pit to use pitch painting, I mean painting mm -hmm. with their with um on and it the painting is the length the if you hold your finger down and you go long, for a long long one the the note that'll be a note and it'll go that long and you can choose instruments to do it with and it's very quick and there's editing and and that the one online now um has instruments from four different cultures so you can play it as if it were made in in um 
China or, uh, you know, and or, or with um, African instruments. They're, they're real instruments, and and so it's quite it's quite nice, and and um, and that's what we did that, to start it off. And then I went to the next stage. Um, w once we got that going, that went in. That actually, when it got done, um, Voyager, the the you know the Voyager company, um, they, yeah. pardon. Yes. Um, well, especially yeah. I remember the recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they went to space. When I got ready to to do the making music, this uh, at the at the center we just researched everything and we went into schools and tried the ideas out and then when we were uh, convinced that it could go we we went to um voyager and they they published it and and we made a full um program that that they published and that that was extremely successful i went into um i think 15 languages um it was it was taken all over the world, and um, uh, it it was very successful. It was called making music, and then there was a whole series that that got going. But that was all started with the research at at see it, and then um, from then I went to the idea of um, we were I, I had uh, um, David was David Rosenboom was the um, head of the program at Mills College that was the, that was the program I started back in, with with Ramon in, in the 60s that was from the tape center and it moved to Mills College and um and then and David became I think he became the head of the program the music program at Cal Art I mean at at um Mills College not right away um Pardon? Not right away, if if I can diverge a bit. I think the chronology was the following. He came to substitute uh, Robert Ashley after he left in 70. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 Pauline uh, brought it to, to Mills College yeah. because I, I was going to New York. And um, so the only one left was Pauline and, and um, Tony. And then it went on for several years. That was way back in 65, 66. But we're talking much much more recent than that with see it. And so at the time we were we started see it, uh, David was the head of the program at Mills by then at, at that point. And so I approached David to be the head of see it. I didn't I was actually commuting from from New York at that point or Santa Monica or Santa Fe or I, I wasn't I wasn't full time at Cal Arts anymore. And so I, I I thought it would be a good thing if he would do that. And in the middle of that, um, and he agreed that he would like to do that. But then shortly after that, this is not that's sort of rel relative to the story. But um, shortly after that, if I'm not mistaken, um, the there was the dean's position was open the dean of music and and so i i said david do you want to be the head of the see it or the or the, or the dean and he, he chose the dean so i recommended him for dean and he got that position so he was he was dean of the music school when he was working with us at see it Wow, I've heard. I, I thought actually that he came right right away as a dean because he mentioned um, recently Michael Century published the book about the sort of development of the experimental arts in Canada after the Expo, and just referring to him, he mentioned that Michael Century was a kind of his primary competitor for that position. So I was assuming he came to Colarts right away to become to become the dean. He he came to Calar to become the dean, but but he he never was the head of see it. He decided he didn't want to do oh. that. Um, that that that's what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. I said you know, I said well you know now be, before he came I said I said you know there is this opening if you like that. So he chose that and he came as dean, um, but participated in in the the see it stuff. And it was right after the the first 
bunch um, of stuff that we did for the kids programs that I decided to do um, something at the Santa, Fe, Santa, Santa Monica Cafe. Um, and um, it's, 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 some of it is very clear to me, but I can't remember the order of everything. Um, and what I did is I set up um, a, a series of 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 um, telecommunication thing. We did performances, and you you the big one that we did. You had I just read the review, and and that that was I don't you have the date on that. I don't remember the date, but in addition to that, I did actually something uh, else um, that was a little more quiet. Um, I did, and I think it was before this, um, I'm not sure. I did a series of, I don't know how many, but four or five, um, this was out of, out of see it, um, four or five sessions over, over a period of three or four months. I, maybe it was one a month. I can't remember the actual thing. And in them, they were talks you may be able to look this up because at the time that we did with with the what you have a review of was mm -hmm. quite a bit later because the he even talks about it in the review that was you know really fast you could play things but when I first did this at see it the the um the the only way you could see something over the web was a it would take about about 30 seconds to <laughs> to form an image <laughs> it was the very beginning of this whole thing it was not there were no cd roms yet um it was just it was just pure you know major effort and so what i did is i set up um um these this three or four month thing that would that would take an audience. The audience was the same audience. They had to sign up to come in, and I did a series of lectures. Um, it was it was crazy what I did. It, it, uh, it, we we did it in the, the sound could could go directly to, to places, but the images were just individual images. There was no no video. And it would take like 30 seconds for it to go. And I would connect with people like Max Matthews and people in different parts of the technological world. And I'd give a lecture on the direction that things were going to go. And I I I made a I don't know if it was a promise, but a, but but I had hoped that by the sec by the end of the lecture, everything I was talking about will have changed. And and it actually did work. <laughs> the CD-ROMs came in, and suddenly we had video. <laughs> you know, it was very fast. The the whole um, emergence of that, and so we had pictures of. Um, I think Max Matthews was the funniest one. He did it from a bedroom in his house, and and he. Um, and and he knew that there was going to take time, so so he would do it from different rooms, and he'd end up in his bedroom somewhere. And every time it would come up, he'd be in a different room <laughs> in his house, talking about the various things about about it. And we did this all all over the all over um, all over the world, but but it was you know it was very painstaking. And then that led into um, the later into the performance that you, that you saw at, that that was in three cities yeah uh, maybe before we will switch to the performance may i ask the question was it um like those events did they uh take place at electronic cafe like yes the yes the, the lectures were at the electronic cafe oh so maybe if i could uh, share the the screen so i think those are the ones um, the ones that, the ones that we had on slides. Um, I didn't see that in there, but um, they may be there. Okay. I didn't have much chance to look at what you sent. I know I will. 
I need just, just a second to move there. I think the earliest period where it is, uh, the earliest years I had was like 90 something. 19 something, definitely. <laughs> Uh, well, yes, just, just, just a second. I think I made uh, an note to myself. It should be page, um, page six. Oh, here you are. Yes, it should be um, November <laughs> of uh, November of 1990. Yeah, that would that would sound about right because that's when everything started, just right around that time. I'm making this bigger so I can see. Yeah, I was old then. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I think I can get this. this you know, this looks like a lot, lot of equipment, and it's probably what we had at that time. Is yeah. that in the in the um that's from the color arts library. They provided me with slides and um I I can get some of them for the research. Oh, hold it right there, hold it right there. Mm -hmm. This looks like it must be because it looks like a small audience. We didn't have a room that I could have done this in at Cal Arts. Anyway, we couldn't have done it telephonically. Um and the, they were great, the uh, people at the, the museum. Mm -hmm. Hold it right there. I'm trying to... I'm trying, some, I'm trying to see who that is. On some of them, I think those are students. Isn't it Mark? Uh, no, that's not Mark. Yeah. Oh, over here. Yeah, I think that's Mark over to the right. Yeah. Yeah, that one. It's hard, it's hard for me to tell, but I, I think that's Mark. For me as well. It's kind of, it looks a bit different today. Um, yeah, I think I, it's more from early 90s. Well, at least the, the part with the audience has got to be, this says Electronic Cafe. Yeah, so that's probably what, what it was, because that is when uh, 1990, 91 is when everything popped that was the explosion and it was very clear wait hold it right there yes Whoop. uh down down a little bit no the other way up i guess yeah yeah there i think let's see who this is oh yeah. that's me <laughs> that doesn't help okay but I, that must be it because we wouldn't we wouldn't have had an audience um yeah, and I also had like uh, one of the questions is how I mean how how did you envision your audience like the target audience both uh, outside of color arts and I mean I think one of the purposes was to sort of teach the next generation of yeah well it was it it was a it was part of the research the the it, see it what that was sponsoring it and um, at and uh, I guess. Right. I think I think anyway. I I don't think I could have done it without money, but um, I didn't have any. So, um, and Cal Arts didn't have any. So it must have been from C. Oh, you can see the audience better there. Yeah, but that's another event. I think it's in ninety. That this is something else. I think. Maybe I don't know. But all at Electronic Cafe because I requested from them everything they had, um, everything okay. that the Library of Colors has from. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. That's that's easier to see. Just hold it there, and I'll enlarge it a little bit here. Yeah, I think this is it. Okay. That, that would have been nice. Um. Yeah, so I think maybe later we will return to later events. And the and next, the next step was um, we, uh, Mark and I started a um, program at that point called um, um, 
Interactor. Oh. It was a program, MIDI had just come out. That's about right for MIDI. Um, I think 90 something. Did you present um, at that computer um, music conference? Music, music, musical instrument digital interface. Mm -hmm. That's that's what that 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 was sort of part of the, the CD ROM was coming out and and everything was happening at the same time. So right as soon as MIDI came out, we um maybe MIDI wasn't even there at that point. Anyway, we'd made a control voltage um uh, program about much a long time before Max um and um came out. You know Max, the um yes. the, yeah. I was I had gone to um I was invited to the media lab at MIT to spend, um, uh, I guess I was there about a month um, and as a guest and I didn't, I got, when, when did the Mac, Mac Plus come out, do you know? Or the Mac, the, the earliest Macintosh. I think it's around this time, but it was just when it, it had just come out, the um you you could find that out but but uh, the IBM just came out with their their home computer and Mac came out with theirs the the IBM was a terrible disaster did you know about that they they built they built in um a keyboard you know touch i mean um um a, a, a computer keyboard mm -hmm. um that was wireless but it but you would when you typed it would take close to um 10 seconds for every letter to come up <laughs> and it was a complete disaster and macintosh didn't do that so they they had that was the the macintosh that um you stuck a a Punch you, you put a, 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 a disc in um, that would load the system. Then you would pull it out. It would be in um, um, R, it would be in in RAM and um, or ROM. I, I guess it would be in ROM read only. And so and then so the system was sitting there, and then you would put another empty one and you could then program it <laughs> it was and it was all one unit you know with a with a black and white um it's screen and um that was the first mac 400 i think it was 400 meg um um meg i don't know four meg i think it was very small. It was what they actually used to go into space the first time when they went to the moon. They had two of them. And um, it, it was the, the very beginning of this whole thing. It's almost un, unimaginable now that we, I have one still, one of those. I computers. was going to say something about it. I, I think that's kind of the, the artifacts that so, sort of, I don't know, symbolize to an extent your friendship. David also has... Uh, uh, the last summer we put together his archive, which is just vast. And he still keeps a couple of computers. One of them is, or both of them are the versions of Macintosh to uh, run HMSL. So he still has them as well. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's what we were working with at that time. I went to MIT and the students were all, I didn't know anything about computers. I mean, I knew about them, but I had never done any programming, obviously. And uh, so this, is, this was this was the beginning of my dream, and uh, so when I went to MIT, I I f found out what computers whether they used IBM or the Macintosh that were both available. And the students at MIT, at the it, it was at the Media Lab, um, and they all had Macintoshes. So I bought an a Macintosh and went went off to work with um, um, Miller, who was just beginning Max at that time. And then um, what's his name? The the great um, guru of um, I, uh, artificial intelligence, AI. 
um, uh, Marvin Minsky. The yeah, Marvin. Marvin was a real fan of my music, so we got along really well. <laughs> he, I mean, it was it was amazing to think back on this. I mean, I mean, I, I didn't realize he was, you know, so important. And and here we were sitting there. I he was he was coaching me on the. I was programming, and he was coaching me on it. And uh, Curtis Rhodes, you know Curtis. Yes. Yeah, um, he um, he had been a student of mine at Cal Arts, and he was now you know running running the MIT um, magazine or whatever they had that, that they were doing, and he was there, and it was just the beginning of um, um, the, the guy. He's always seems young to me, but he's not young anymore. He came from. Um, Earcom um, to to run the media lab. I think he's may still be running it. I don't know. Anyway, um, it was just the very beginning. It was the second or third year or fourth year. Of, it was. I think I was the first guest, but maybe there were a couple before me. But it was it was the beginning of that whole thing. And in that, um, to make a long story long, uh, in that in that. Uh, several weeks, I decided to that I would take my task to write a program that um, that would allow a conductor to conduct um, music for, uh, with a baton that would go that would be read by the by the uh, computer. So um, and and I did it. Uh, I did program it, but um, we didn't have the interface to be able to allow it to happen. But the 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 but it w did work from the standpoint of digital. And um, so when I got back, we were living in in Pecos, New Mexico at that time. And when I got back, um, so that would have been that was in the eighties. That would have been not like a 1983, 84. So it was before some of the other stuff I was talking about. I just connected it in my head because our our son had just been born, um, one of our sons, and um, so um, so I I that's when I first got a hold of Mark. That's what this. I'm backwards now in time. I've I've just uh, that was the beginning of it, and the, the 90s where I've already, uh, I've already worked with Mark. They sent me Mark Coniglio to program it in, in, um, uh, into a Macintosh format. Cause I had it, I had it, but it was, um, it was used the very beginnings of the Max program that they were just starting at that point. And it was a, a called a different thing at that. They, they, it was a program that um, they used for children, it, Plato? Uh, no. Pardon. Was it Plato? Uh, no, uh, or or something uh, that that Mark and, and his colleagues produced. It. Just I, I'm referring to Plato. No, the, the one that that they were using at MIT was um, the guy who who actually created the Mac. Um, what was his name? The um, um, that Sim name. It's amazing. These people were all sitting there. <laughs> uh, it was before the, it was just the beginnings of um, the Mac. And he had actually, um, a, a few years before he was at Kodak, their research lab and and um, de designed the, the Macintosh, what became the Macintosh. And the Kodak didn't think it was important enough to own, so they gave let him take it, even though it was on their money. And he came to MIT after the Mac came out. It was just within months, or you know, at that point, I can't remember his name now. But um, he helped also with this programming. Um, he was in on those meetings, and they were giving it to children because it was a it was a very friendly program, you know, as Max is, and um, and it was in an earlier form of Max. It had a name, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, and I I'm, I'm really bad with that. That's that's at ninety. What's really gone is names. They 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 pop in, but it takes a while. 
Um, but in any case, um, so yeah, so that was 1984. Um, and um, and Mark flew out as a, he was an undergraduate student at Cal Arts, but he was very good at programming. So that's when he first came out. And the first um, voltage control equipment was coming out from, um, um, what was it? I forgot the company now, very big company now, but it was just getting going that at that time. And they were very interested in my, uh, I guess I was one of the few people doing this stuff, I don't know. And uh, they were very interested in um, um, my having their equipment. And I, 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 I gave them, the, I said, I would love to have your equipment, but you can't use my name and I don't have to use any, uh, no, no publicity of any sort. I just want the equipment. So they said, that sounds good to us. So they, they I got this whole bunch of equipment that came in when we programmed uh, Interactor. I was able to use the earliest sequencers and, and things like that on, on it. And, um, um, and so I, at, at that point, that that it was that was the the beginning the eighty four and by night by nineteen ninety when we were talking before things had progressed I, see it I don't think it existed yet at that point. Um, but in terms of the dates of establishment, uh, I think I I have two dates. One is eight eighty nine, which makes more sense. Uh, yeah, than... yeah, yeah. That's about right. That because in eighty four I was just getting started with the mm -hmm. with, with it, and that's that's what led me to believe because I was at MIT at the Media Lab, and I realized we could do something at CalArts. We had resources that they didn't have um, at at MIT. I mean, they had the big big you know the big wheels, but they had to invite people in like me to 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 get it disseminated, you know, and get input. Um, you know, I was giving talks to this to graduate students because they they really didn't know much about music at that point. That you know it was really pure the the you know pure computer stuff. And as a matter of fact, with when I demonstrated it to the students before I left, what I had done, um, one of the students looked like he was going to pass out and I said is there something wrong he said yes we've been trained that we that, that what you're doing is not possible I said what does that mean he said well you just you think you think two things at the same time you're you're using your left hand and your right hand and you're you're drawing all over the screen he said he said we were taught you have to go step by step by step and I said, well, I guess I don't do it right. <laughs> but but he was, at, at, I know why, because I, di I didn't know anything about computers, you know, the, how they worked or anything. By the time I got back to to um, give the stuff to um, Mark, I couldn't read what I did anymore. I Because I it was so, such a mess <laughs> on the screen. There was no, I mean, I went up over here and wrote something and over here and wrote something. All my notes were so so disorganized. I was fine as long as I was close to it. But as soon as a couple of weeks went by, I couldn't remember what I needed. I had to decipher it for him. So um, my programming was not very good. As you mentioned, uh, MIT, I think just in, in terms of thinking of those um, innovative clusters that converge art, science, and technology, very inspired by the example of the Center for Advanced Visual Stu Studies, the one that was run by, by Kepesh or, or, or no. no the, you mean the, the program they had? Uh, they had, I mean, the Center, I think it closed uh, quite a while ago. Um, the, the one that preceded uh, Media Lab, I think, ideal. Oh, 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 I don't know about that. That I don't know the history of it, so mm. I can't tell. And um, experiments EAT, back to 60s, experiments in, in arts and technology, wasn't uh, that center among your inspirations? It sort of reminds a little bit. 
I'm sorry, say that again. Um, uh, the AAT, uh, Experiments and Art and Technology yeah, yeah. Well, Building that, Art, guys. I, it, it grew out of my experience at, M at MIT. Uh, I realized that we had something that we could, if we brought people in, Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think I didn't think it would work at Cal Arts um, with the faculty. The, the faculty, um, the the deans um, were. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, at one point during this period, I don't know what year it was, but between eighty four and when we started in eighty nine or whatever we started to see it, uh, I was very much involved in the interaction between the human being and and the machine that's why i got the 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 the, the, the that's why i took the the task of reading scores but reading a, a, the the way i did read the scores by the way um was to was to ha have only the baton controlling the tempo mm -hmm. and then i divided the the, the score into um, um, measures of a piece, the score. Instead of reading the pitches, I read only the beats. And then when you got close to when the computer was supposed to play, they would start reading the notes. And when you see C sharp on beat two, then you're going to play on the first beat of the next measure. And, and so you would only have actual score reading the pitches in a very short span of time. So it allowed for being able to read very complicated scores, but only when it was needed. And um, and the other the other approach to it was to read everything on the screen. And if it made a mistake, you were in trouble. <laughs> And it was the, the computers weren't fast enough, not the home computers, to be able to do it. On a big computer, you could come close to that. But so it, it really worked. And I was able to go out on the road and play concerts with, with this. Um and and so the the so I brought kind of um oh oh I can tell you a, a very a very interesting story. I'm sitting there with um ah God, um, give me his name again. Marvin, Marvin, and, um, and 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 the guy who was doing Max. But but I'm I'm sitting with these people who are way above my head in terms of computers and and so forth. And um, Marvin said, "How can you get the beat?" Because I was planning this thing that I to program how do you get the beat because you come down and how do you know what what the tempo is until the second beat i said you you never played in a band and anything no i never did anything like that i said you go and one <laughs> you have the upbeat and the downbeat because we don't know either you know the the conductor goes and he goes boom it doesn't go boom and you just play, he goes, and one. He said, oh, I didn't realize that. So that's easy then. We just made an upbeat and a downbeat, and then we got the tempo. That that was what I brought to, to these people. They had not, um, they had no practical knowledge. And that, that was one of the kinds of things that I realized, you know, I understood what was going on. I couldn't actually do most of it uh, in terms of programming. But but a place like Cal Arts would have input that would be very interesting input. And if you brought an engineer in or a computer programmer or someone in to do research, you would have people to work with, artists and you know and and painters and and uh, musicians and composers. So um, that that was part of the whole the whole thing. That was the inspiration for it. Yeah, that that's interesting that it comes around um, around that time. Uh, yeah, because most of this again as, as center at MIT for visual studies and AAT, they kind of emerged in sixties as many other centers who sort of uh, put 
engineers and artists uh, together. And then with uh, with the recession of 70s and so forth, everything sort of died out and tech um, was more sort of dominating and, and has been um, received more investment. I wonder, uh, so David mentioned that at some point, because I mean, it makes sense, the institutions, they're located close to each other. And um, given your interests, and I again, the idea of uh, sort of learning from each other, finding the common uh, language, co-creating. Let's yeah. stop. Alan Kay, he invented the Macintosh, the programming language. Oh. The, the, um, I told you the name would come. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, that's fine. <laughs> So what was it the time when uh, CET emerged? Uh, was it the time when you considered and attempted to establish collaboration with uh, Caltech? Because David mentioned several times there was an, there were attempts and never they they led to any kind of success. Yeah, we tried. We tried. It never really came about, I don't think, unless it came after me. Um, no. Uh, it, what, to your extent, was the problem like in terms of, again, establishing that kind of collaboration between institutions? I I don't know. I uh, Part of the problem was that I wasn't there full time. So I don't know the details of what, you know, what, what began to happen down the line. Um, there was, there was, um, I was going to tell you that one meeting at, so the people, Alan Kay and Minsky were working together on uh, when, uh, uh, in, at, when I came to, to their, uh, to, um, to MIT and, um, oh God, it just jumped out again. Sorry. Um, oh, I lost it. I lost my train of thought at that point. What was I just talking about? Yeah, I, I think my question was uh, sort of regarding this attempt to bring together CalArts and Caltech and uh, the lack of success with that pursuit uh, to bring together art and technology. And then you referred to example of MIT and communicating with Minsky and Alan Kay. I think there's something again about the sort of their detachment or lack of right. thing. Yeah, Minsky and, and Alan Kay were... I mean, they, they, they're the ones along with, um, and I can't remember his name, who was, who had just come to run the media lab. Um, um, but, but they were, they were interested in getting this, you know, info, info. So they wanted, they wanted to bring composers into MIT who, who understood what was going on, but didn't have the background. And and to help them to develop further and 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 get information and the program that they create that Alan Kay and and Minsky was work was working with was um was was for children. I mean, they were really trying to to create a an open window for to get the the relationship between the rest of the world. And what they were doing, they weren't. They were very far from being, you know, sort of in closets, you know, the, doing research. They 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 had programs that kids could do um, dolls. They made dolls. When I first came in to the media lab, there was this strange creature that was flying around. It was a a balloon that was going around, and they they were. It was a it it was the algorithm for looking for food from a fish that that they were feeding into it. I mean, it was it, it was it was a wonderful place. I, I just fell in love with it. That really was the inspiration for see it. Um, it it was, you know, for me. Oh, so the work with kids, it wasn't. I mean, it, um, it was rather coming from your own idea and not the receiving a grant with funding for you do with technology, something that- uh, No, they were studying the kids and to see, to, to get something from the kids. The, the, what the kids had it was something they could program. And they were they had dolls 
that that were that they were interact uh, toys and things that they were interacting with that they could make work with this program because it was a very easy program to to program with and um that became max it was the the pre it had been been around MIT um for a couple of years growing and so miller knew that program and converted it into the what became Max, but Max didn't come out for another 10 years, I think. Um, it was a long time. Yeah, the, I, mean, I mean, those parallels, they're interesting because um, in Urbana, where I've been for two years, the Plato, uh, the Plato program that was, I think, developed back in the 60s and perpetuated for several decades, um, they it was also sort of translated to many languages and traveled around the world as uh, a kind of um, I mean it was used for computer indication and the way I recalled about it is that um, your um, when you were talking about the interactor and its antecedents with sort of uh, drawing pitch uh, it it reminds Manfred Klein's you know and his uh, his his Santic cycles. Um, as well from and and Manfred Kleins, he was from MIT, but I'm diverging. So uh, with drawing page and uh, sort of in addition to the moment that it was uh, developed and used by kids at around the time when the media emerged, there was a similar story in um, Urbana and that was aligning to everything related to platter and computer indication. Um, a student of the director of, of all related to Plato, Lippold Haken, maybe you've heard about him. He was developing that kind of software. Uh, what was his name? Lippold Haken. He he's um, no, developer of Continuum. I spent time at Illinois and uh, Urbana um, over a period. You probably have that. Um, uh, and um, Scott, somebody, was... Um, running the studio and um, was doing programming at that time. He made some interesting things. I used them actually, um, you know, it, it used anything I could get my hands on um, that would, you know, that would help me toward this goal of um, that I finally got, but it, it took a long time. Yeah. yeah, they were it, they were very very uh, good and at uh, Salvatore Martorano was the head of the program. He, I just he, we we met in the late fifties. They invited um, um, by, I think about fourteen young composers. We, we were all just in college at the time, uh, and they had this this from all over the United States. They got 14 promising young people. I met Salvatore, um, uh, Salvatore, Tori. I, yeah, I guess that's what uh, I think no one calls Sal, him. Sal Martirano. I met him back at that point and we remained friends. So uh, I spent a lot of time at Illinois um, over the years. Yeah, but have you been there like in, no, I think if you were referring to um, Scott Wynand, then he became director of the studios in 74, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, but what I'm referring to, uh, I put in the chat um, the name of, uh, I mean, of, of the engineer of Lippold Haken and his continuum audio. Um, so just a bit of that story in 80s there was a kind of rivalry between the experimental music studios uh, that are on the south of campus and of course as humanities and arts are underfunded and on the north of campus at electrical and computer engineering uh, aligning to all this computer education well-funded uh, programs um, there have been a couple of talented students who developed like the, the new software musical software and hardware just using the additional funding and um, again, the, the work that Libel Hucken was performing just very much rem reminds me, like again, drawing the sound and uh, finding alternative um, alternatives to, to MIDI, again, for educating children. That's just very, very kind of similar stories. That's, that's much later though, because, because MIDI hadn't come out yet at that point. Um, this was, MIDI didn't come out until the 90s. 
Um, yeah, so it's late late ages, early early nineties. That period. was beyond. That was after my time there. I was there at the beginning. Of the big festivals we had Stockhausen and all the things that were going on, and I performed. I was still playing the clarinet then, and I performed in those. Um, and um, it it was one of the few places that had technology and music together. It wasn't. I mean, Columbia did and Princeton did, um, and uh, you know there were a handful of places, but it was not much um, up until well, MIDI opened it all because that that made enough money for people to make a lot of junk. <laughs> um, but I won't go into that. But um, so I think we covered it just about, and then. And then at a certain point, um, I was I was going in and out. I went for one semester and back. And then I then when we got to New York, I was still commuting. Uh, Santa Fe was only a couple of hours of commuting, but New York it was like six hours. I and at that point, I only came in two two weeks out of the year um, just to get my health insurance and and. <laughs> And then finally just stopped. They gave me a, a, an honorary degree and I I accepted it and then quit um, the school <laughs> with my degree. I graduated, I figured, at that point. So see, it went on for quite a while. I don't know if it's still going there, but... Oh, that was one of the questions. Uh, when, when do you think the see it was over with, with your departure or or earlier? It's I don't know. I don't know after that because I didn't have much relationship. It went, it went on um, after my, after the all the stuff we talked about. It, I stopped. I stopped doing things there. I had a problem with it. I'll just tell you. You can use it or not. I don't care. But, um, but I didn't. I didn't think that it should go to faculty members. The faculty members were all artists, and i I thought there that I thought that um, well, I I know what I was going to tell you. It had to do with Peter Norton, and this will explain. Uh, it'll give you a little background on what I was just about to tell you. But remember what I was talking about, if you can. Um, we right in the middle of all this, Peter was very excited about what I was doing, and. Um, and and I had suggested to the the um, I guess David must have been Dean at that point. I had suggested that we create a new program, maybe a new a small school. The, the the they were they weren't called programs. They were called school the School of the Arts, um, but it was the school there were. The film program was a little school of its own, and they had a, each one had a dean. And I had proposed that we make a new one that dealt with uh, digital arts that would um, that would allow students who didn't have a background in music or art or things to be able to come with it. They had a background in technology, but they were interested in music so that they could come into the school. They could never come into the school if they didn't have any art that they made, but just in the, if they made it, it probably wasn't very good at that point. So they, they would be good at programming. And so it would be a small school that would allow um, us to have a a platform for young people who were involved in becoming a scientist and um, and learning along with all the other artists, so they'd be part of that. And so uh, um, Peter Norton thought it was a really good idea, so he called a meeting at um, his office for where his foundation was. And everyone came to the meeting, all the deans came to the meeting, and I presented the idea. And the film, 
the the head of I'm not going to tell you any names, but the 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 dean of the school of the film school said, "Oh, this business of video," he said, "it's never going to go anywhere. It's all we're always going to have cameras and 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 that and that." And it went through person by person. And I said, I pulled out. It turned out that that week, Time Magazine had a had a on the cover the word interactor and the whole thing about about interaction so i pull i was sitting on it i pulled it out and i <laughs> said the, the time is now and they all just poo pooed me and um and peter said to them he said he said he's right you're all wrong all of you are wrong <laughs> no not david wasn't wrong but uh but he wasn't one of the deans. I mean, he was he was the dean of the music school. But but so we, David and I, put um, instead of that, we created a program in the music school, which had a video visual artist. She's still there, I think, or she may have. have um, but she was. And we, I, I interviewed video artists um, at that time who were the technology artists, so that that they could help do visual stuff so i made a little interactive um wing of the music school and so the music school was the only school that had this program <laughs> it's still there it's, it's 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 still there so the whole idea of of, of what what we were talking about was just it people just did not get it i mean I mean, some people did. A lot of people did. I it wouldn't have happened. But, but the people who were really into their arts didn't really get it, and I, I think there's a reason for that. And I don't think it's a bad reason. And and uh, I'll just give you a quick um, update on that. If you spent your life, take music for instance. If you, I, I, I started on the clarinet when I was six years old. And, and, you know, by the time I was nine or 10 years old, I was playing everything. I, I, I just, I, I, I practiced all my life up until, you know, through high school, um, three to four hours a day. I couldn't stand school. I, I learning, to, you know, music and that's all I did my whole life. And that was, you know, well, I graduated in 19... 51 uh i went the, that the i went to play in the denver symphony the youngest person in a symphony orchestra at that point and um and it, and when i got started with the technology i understood that the likes of me weren't going to do technology why would you throw that whole thing away after all those years, it's more than a doctor puts in. It's more than anyone puts in, you know, to learn an instrument and and to compose and all the stuff you can do. But for there, I I just to I just got this, you know, when this whole thing started in the 58, 59, um, when things were just getting started, the transistor, I just, I just it just clicked for me. It meant that I was I was going to be alive when the word like the time I felt felt this was the time that that the moment that music would take the would would have that the print printing press had in the 17th century, um, and and they don't come often. You don't you're not there when that happens. And I was there, and I thought. I play the clarinet, but I'm not offering anything special. I mean, when I'm playing, I do. But when I die, there's other people who are going to play the clarinet. And I'm writing music. And, you know, it's another piece of music. It's not Beethoven. It's not great music. It's okay, you know. But I have this idea that no one seems to understand. <laughs> In the composers, the musicians. And what's going to happen is... Computer programs are going to programmers are going to make the language to bring music into the future, and they're going to bring keyboards and traditional instruments that aren't as good as the ones we've got. 
And that's what people without a background in music are going to be doing. They're going to doing playing. Uh, they're going to be doing amateur stuff. When we so I thought of this as the moment that everything was going to change. The the I called it the technological big bang, and uh, I wanted to be part of it. And so I, I as soon as I could, I gave up the clarinet. I took out the biography that I played an instrument. And I only put that back in about 10 years ago. Um, so I would be a, a model for a new generation. But I also knew that I couldn't write music like they were going to write. And I what I didn't understand was that um, well, I won't go into all this, but that's what drew me into to this whole thing. And so I was, by the time we were doing this, this stuff with um, um, with the interactor, I could understand that the filmmakers, the, um, you know, the, the painters who were painting paintings didn't want light shows and things like that they weren't going to go with that because they, they spent their life doing something and they weren't thinking about uh the you know the next generation so we ended up with that in the music school david understood completely yeah um yeah i, w I was uh, going exactly to ask to ask um uh, about like the reception of SEED and its activity uh, by other faculty members, administration and whatever, um, on the one side and also outside of colors, like uh, by by audiences and how it was different. Because what I heard from, from David, and that's kind of the part of the personal conversation, what was part of the personal conversation, I was wondering why leaving the position of a dean, he, uh, I mean, he doesn't take an attempt to establish like a, a, a kind of a similar Santa, which will, will be aggregating, accumulating what's related to brain art, since he's a pioneer of Nora music and the US, uh, I mean, will lack such kind of Santa. And what he what he told like about that inner kitchen and color arts is that uh, there's a certain gatekeeping and that some, many faculty, they do not really want to bring any research technology and so forth yeah. in. So was it somewhat similar back in those years? Yeah, that, that was. What was happening as I understand, I didn't, I saw the beginnings of it, but I'm not surprised it happened, is that the, the, um, the, the, the faculty um, of, of CalArts felt like we were against them because we weren't letting them. They could join, but they but it was they weren't getting a grant, and they wanted grants to be able to do things. So I, I could see the writing on the wall. It was you know a lot of you know one of the terrible things about. I, I was associate dean. I, you know, I helped start CalArts, and um, and the the I could not believe the um, um, the politics. You know, right now in the United States, the politics are just terrible, and the politics were horrible in those days between between the 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 deans and you know it, it was horrible i would go out and they, they it was it was collapsing at, cer at certain points they were going to sell cal arts um to another school and uh you know it was it it, it the, the backbiting uh the the um it, it's terrible to hear but it's it happened it was just, just horrible it, it happens in universities too it's it's a terrible kind of um, political thing where you know you, you you're we want the grant to go to me i have these great ideas and maybe they do and maybe they don't but this is not the way i imagined it i imagined as as an artist you would 
want to work with an engineer or somebody like that. You 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 would need them, um, and the and you would get money for the for the project, but you wouldn't get paid. You wouldn't get time off from teaching because your teaching was part of. Uh, I thought I thought of teaching as an internship with for a student. You know, as as a way to share things and watch them grow with it and um so i was a flop <laughs> i couldn't deal with the, the tech the thing and i think that's that's where it, it fell apart i i was i'm not a privy to the information because i i stopped at a certain point i did a number of projects and then and then it, i don't know who took over um because when we got the school, that the program going at in the music school with the, you know, the visuals and technology, we hired a technology person into the school, um, and into the music school, and um, he the last they don't have it anymore. I don't think the last one wasn't the, it Tom Earp, no. Tom Herb, I think, was it, yeah. He was involved in many projects, I think, uh, in partly perhaps in harmonic tone generator that there was- Yeah, he, he had a group, he had a group, the, the, the yeah. I think he, he died- uh, Oh so... no, Mark Trail maybe, right? Mark Trail, Mark Trail was the one, yeah. Tom Herb came in, Tom was good, to, but- um, but Mark Mark was the person that that we brought in at the beginning, uh, as the the faculty member, the music faculty member, um, for see it. Yeah, uh, he, he's not the, not see it. He was he part of see it, but for the 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 intermediate inter, interactive program interactive program we had with the visual art. So we had a a person he he knew music, but. He had this wonderful group that they that they would go. You you know about that. They would go around and they would they would the audience would they would they would be making computer music music with their computer, uh, and they would talk to each other through the web. As I'm gonna, somebody would put something. I'm gonna put something up to to listen to, and someone else. Well, I'm gonna do this and you would see all the writing as they were programming <laughs> the audience would see them in the, in, the, in the i forgot what that group was but they 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 used to go around and do that uh it was it was nice yeah i i i'm a bit puzzled but i think it's kind of the open question it will be an open question for a while to figure out when the seat was uh, indeed over because there are not many records but in uh, in the CalArts archive, at least what is uh, captured in the finding aids and CalArts archive, it's kind of, it's still in chaos, um, that after you left, th there's some 90s are well documented relatively. There is a report, there is a, a paper for the computer um, a music conference and so forth. And what happened in, in, in 2000s after you left, uh, there seems to be like several events or fast. And what year? I'm sorry, you, 2000, you said? Uh, late 2000s. Uh, there were a couple of events like festivals uh, under the umbrella of SEAT, yet neither Mark nor you uh, nor David were sort of a part of it. And I encountered names again of Mark Trail when he was alive, which makes sense based on what you said, that he may still sort of maintain uh, some spirit of see it in, in some form. Uh, and also Clay Chaplin, but I don't know more names of people who- Yeah, he was a student. He was a graduate student, I think. Um, yeah, so I think there was nothing, neither, there, there's no source, no sign of activity, I think up to 2010, maybe. Yeah, so yeah, it, it kind of- I, I was really out of it by then. Um, I, 19 in the late i stopped i probably was gone by then totally i mean for a long time it was just um uh, a couple of months and then a couple of weeks finally 
and and that that ended around I don't know when it ended, but um, it was in the eighties, nineteen eighties. Well, I think you got it. Um, we started in nineteen eighty nine, and and that that would make sense. And then I probably was gone by within five years of that. It's when I got my my. Um, I could look it up. I don't know if I have it anywhere easy, but when I got the um, um, uh, doctorate, uh, uh, the, what do you call it? Um, Honor, honorary doctorate. Honorary doctorate. That would, whatever year that was, that was sort of the year I just pulled out finally. I took it to mean I would graduate it, and so I didn't have to go back anymore. It was hard for me to give up because I, you know, I was there the year before CalArts started to help plan the whole thing. So it it was um, there were a lot of a lot of thinking and a lot of energy that was involved and a lot of terrible politics. Uh, I'm going back. I'm going to give a, a lecture. I'm going to perform in Los Angeles, and I'm the day before I'm going to give a lecture at Cal Arts, and I'm going to tell them what happened. They they don't they they don't even have they the first year listed as the first year of the school. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give a lecture on what what really happened during that time, and they're okay with it. So that we'll we'll do that. Yeah, they, they don't seem to be particularly conscious about the past, where we come from, where we are going and so forth. But that's kind of the side critique. Um, there was one of the projects that uh, just miraculously kind of to me, but maybe along the line because David was involved, um, exhibition of John Cage, his last one, uh, uh, Rolly Holy Over. Uh, it was, I think, touring from uh, 93 to 95 and uh, outside of US. Um, like, do you have any any idea? And I mean, what was the the nature? How it was connected to see it? Just just because David was involved um, in that. I don't. That what you said it was ninety three. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, there was the last cage, uh, the last exhibition of cage rolling all over the circus that had three uh, sort of parts of it. It was conceived in uh, 92, I think in association either uh, with LACMA or MOCA, I think with LACMA more. more uh, uh, and David got involved and he has extensive documentation of it. And then Cage died. And basically I think David and some other potentially people from Colorts were involved in um, sort of putting it up. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I, I don't know. I didn't have anything no. to do with it at that point. Okay, so maybe he just uh, ascribed a kind of affiliation. Yeah, and uh, in in relation to Electronic Café Internacional, so um, as far as I understand, you initiated that kind of um, col collaboration. Um, anything, any, any particular episode, anything particularly memorable about just the work with Kid Galloway and Sherry Rabinovitz and other people there that you could call. Is there anything particular? Well, we, we, one, of the, one of the projects we did early on uh, when I was trying to get the whole thing going, aside from the ones with the, um, the Santa Monica Cafe, I brought composers in because I, when I went to MIT, I developed this thing with a baton and, and I followed through on that. And I had a baton that was um, that that you could actually use in performance, and wrote a, a an orchestra um, a chamber orchestra piece with it. I forgot the name of it. And so I brought composers in from different parts of the world, uh, mostly from the United States. I think it was. Earl Brown and I can't remember the, but there were four or five composers in where um, they could uh, experiment using a baton and and see it paid for their coming in and you know researching 
what they would do uh, with it. And that, that turned out to be a very um, memorable experience. I mean, it was very, they were very excited um, to to be able to do that. And some of them, like, like Earl, um, became uh, sort of involved in, because in, his music, he had developed this available forms thing that, that he wear it that he had two conductors and they were improvising and so he had the strongest ideas of how to use it but there there were i i don't remember all the con, the composers but it was three or four of them and um that was a really nice thing to be able to do and i i, th I think everybody re remembered it very well i can't remember all the names but um but the it was i think it was a nice idea but it just didn't it didn't really have the ability to stay with. I also made festivals during that period, um, music festivals. Yeah, music festivals. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then they brought me back. I went after I left. They wanted to keep going, and they but they because I had done so well, they wanted to get my ideas of what they should do next. And um, Cage was still alive. Um, there, there were, a, a, you know, that generation was still alive at that point, but they were getting older. So I said, why don't you do a Black Mountain uh, festival where you bring, you know, sort of the um, Cage and all the composers who are going to be dead in a couple of years, and. Um, uh, of course, I didn't think you lived beyond 80, so uh, um, uh, I think uh, John died at about 80 years old, something like that. Um, but um, so they thought that was a dumb idea. They should bring young composers in. Uh, and I and I said, well, you've got, you, you could do a two-week festival that would, that would really be meaningful. It would it would bring all these Elliot Carter, all these people who are now famous are going to, you know, many of them are going to just, they'll still be famous, but they'll, you won't hear their music anymore. With Cage, that's not true, but with most of them, you just don't, you know, they're, they're just gone. Uh, that's the way the whole past was. You've got a couple of Stravinsky and, you know, you have a, you have a handful of people that you can you latch on to, but the rest of them who are the main part of the, not that they aren't important, the ones that we kept, but this this would be a we could bring the BBC in, we could bring you know public radio in, and we do this whole thing, and they said no no we don't want to do that we want to we want to do just like we were doing. Before I said, well, you can't do that. It's, it doesn't work, and so they we didn't get along, and they didn't go with it. And there, the festivals finally became internal. Um, you know, the people at the uh, and the school began to take it over. We had outside group performing. We didn't have. We had our group performing, but we we had three cities going with the festivals, and it just didn't be they didn't continue with that and i think they still have the festival but it's it isn't anything like it was we would sell out we would sell out the hotels in the area uh six months in advance critics would come from all over the world to 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 be there because we had you know all the major composers that were alive at that point and um they would interact with the students and uh, it was really good. So the whole thing became kind of ordinary. It wasn't bad, but it just became kind of ordinary. I I, I remember reading um, a year ago that that book that was kind of retrospective. Oops, sorry, on the uh, on the last big festival, and it seems um, that the the festival was pretty much off again in early nineties and. The way David explained it, it was related to the art funding of art and the sort of crisis with um, national endowment for arts because of sort of some inappropriate art and change change of law and the the way things are funded. And basically, after that, 
as he uh, as he described it um the management of uh, the funding for the festivals and many other events it sort of passed to administrators from artists themselves and that was kind of part of the problem um and eventually the uh, well i got the money i raised the money for those festivals so uh i i went to rockefeller and ford and um peter norton helped and uh, uh they were all personal you know i was i was i was um one of the people that Rockefeller brought in to learn what was going on in the world uh, in the United States. So uh, it, it may be, maybe what he said is true. I, 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 I saw the writing on the wall. The, the performers wanted to be the performers uh, instead of bringing other groups in to play. And um, we had a, the, the group, we, we didn't have faculty members performing because they, they didn't want to play that music at the time. We had, I, I got a grant to bring a group of young people in who would, their jobs as master's students, graduate students, would be to play new music for the faculty and the students and, and for the festival. And um, uh, that group became the ear unit. You know, do you know who they are? Yeah, that, that was the group that it became the ear unit. Oh. Um, so, uh, and some of them are still at Cal Arts. Two of them are still at Cal Arts, and um, but but it, the writing was on the wall. You know, I I didn't. Uh, that's part of the politics that that went on. David was very good with the politics. He uh, it was amazing. He had, he's he. I mean, he was able to deal with uh, things that I just couldn't deal with. I mean, I didn't like what was going on. I didn't like fighting with people. That just wasn't... Da David has a wonderful personality. He's a per he's a really good administrator. He's he's honest and he's straight and he helps, um, you know, he helps people out. We had, you know, all kinds of things. He was just wonderful. As a, I don't... He's not... No, he retired, didn't he? Now, as I've just mentioned, he, he didn't retire. He's still uh, teaching, but he retired from the dean's position a couple of years ago. And in connection to that, I was wondering why, like, if if uh, finally he got some time for creative activity, why not to start <laughs> another center? <laughs> so yeah. he's, been, he's still teaching. He will be in New York at Roulette in November of this year. So you may see each other. Yeah. Yeah, we keep in touch a little bit, and not as much as we should, but yeah. yeah. And in terms of the Cal Arts, uh, not not Cal Arts, see it uh, network and other artists who potentially performed like um, along with you at uh, Electronic Cafe. Um, just in terms of uh, re recovering some some, some names, um, whether again, was it what was there a kind of uh, see it network of artists uh, researchers whom we didn't mention so far i think i think mark caniglio he brought a couple of people to my attention one of them tom lopez another becky allen but i have little idea oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the relation yeah that's true um tom lopez and becky allen i don't know the names so much um but they were they were they worked along with us. Um, they were all students. I mean, eventually they weren't students, but but they were students at the time. We had we had a, the student body was really nice. I mean, they um, at that the, the 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 when we were starting the see it, we we had a a, a student faculty relationship of about um two to one i mean you it was like i would have four or five students and i would be their mentor um and so I, it was not like a i was it was like as like i said it was more, more like an internship and i took care of what their problems were tom didn't really have a good background in music 
um, uh, he, you know, he didn't have a traditional background. And so um, I got him going on things that many of the other students didn't go on with. Um, it, you know, he learned so that when he went off, he became, he went to Oberlin, I think. Yes, and, he's still there. Yeah. And um, and so he, uh, there were several who who would, who could get, we didn't care about their academic backgrounds. It was their creativity that would bring them in. So, you know, I didn't even look at their background, but, but, but when they came to work with me, I looked at their background because I wanted to make sure that they were going to get what they needed. And, um, and we would talk it over, we'd set up a curriculum uh, and they could, um, they, they would set their goals the, the students would set their goals are much too high. The goals were much too high usually, but but they really worked at it. You know, they they accepted that principle. So we even had to create a couple of courses for, um, you know, 18th century music or tech, you know, um, a counterpoint from the Renaissance and things we had to create them for them because they thought that they needed that. And um, so we, they had little courses, remedial courses they had to take. And so Tom got his, his education. It was a great education. Um, he made it himself, a little help for me, but, um, but, but he made it. What is, what is your take on uh, on the like the main teleconcert uh, that took place at Electronic Cafe? I'm going to have to get off in about five minutes. So. Oh, okay, uh, that that's good. Um, so the one I guess you saw like the recording on on YouTube, David published it years ago, I think, of um, the teleconcert that took place, I think, in ninety five. I mean, how, how was it from from your perspective, from the New York perspective? Because I've I've heard uh, how David described it, and it's interesting. How was it in another? What uh, what, what what concert was that? Uh, three cities uh, teleconcert. I think. Oh, 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 the one at Santa yeah. Monica Cafe. Oh, I loved it. That was great. Um, it was a lovely evening, and everything worked. <laughs> it was we did we did several of them. That was. That was, um, I think, the biggest one we did, and uh, yeah, it was really nice. I was going to do an opera, um, but um, I was commissioned to do an opera for by some foundation, from foundation or something like that. Um, um, but I refused to to do a story, so I didn't want I didn't want to be telling a story in the opera. I was going to be more um uh, sort of abstract and visual and um interactive and you know, so I didn't get to do it but that's what I was going to do this this that was the beginning of what I was going to be doing I was going to be doing a an opera in three cities at the same time and um I never got it done because I couldn't get the funding for it but that was the beginning of it. And uh, I did make a piece finally that was similar to it. I had the idea that that um, the, the, the basic idea was that there were two people caught up in what now is, you know, I, we didn't have what, what you, what do we call it? Um, um, Facebook and all these. Social media. Um, social we didn't have social media yeah what, what we had was um um i forgot what it's called now but it, it was something like blue AOL, box aol you oh. know um it, that was the beginnings of it and um but th this was so i i imagined there would be a future in which people would be working on the everything would be their interaction with other people and everything would just be on the web. Um, and so the two people were in two different cities on the web and the, and, and the other character in this opera was the shaman. Uh, and that was the Balinese 
that was a Balinese um, person who would control everything. So I finally did do the opera with two people sitting on the stage. I did it for the New York Festival um, several several years ago, but um, and it was called the um, well, it doesn't matter what it was called. But the two people who were going to be in two different cities were um, sitting on the stage on opposite side, not in, not in contact with the other people because I couldn't do it in multiple cities. And um, the shaman was in the center, and and he was wired so that. As he moved through, he could control images changing, and and he was teaching them to play uh, music. And he had we had two disc levers, and he would he would go, he would go like point, and a light would come on. There'd be a, a disc lever, and he'd go boom, and then there was a monitor over each, and it it had um, his hands, so his hands. But but video of his hands were which were controlled by his movement. So if he would if he would go like this, this hand would go like this, and the piano would play the, those notes. And he was in in space moving it. So that was the idea for it. And in the um, uh, in that in the in, in New York when we did it, uh, I was I was controlling the shame. I was being the shaman. And we had the other two cities were the two people and the who were just sitting at their desks and as they moved their hand, they could make things happen and and uh, and so forth. So I never got the three cities, but I did do a um, it was called intimate immensity was the name of it. And um, um, no, that was that's the later one. I don't forgot what it was called now, but uh, well, we did do the production, but I never got it on three cities. That was that one at the kitchen you're talking about was fun because I really thought I was going to be able to. That was three cities, and I thought I was going to be able to do it, but it never happened. So amazing! So I I think I shouldn't uh, keep you for too long, and yeah, you have to go. Uh, just out of interest, I, I will stop. The, the recording.